Welcome to the live steam build of Charles, the Penryn quarry engine. This is being built to 1 12th scale to run on gauge 1 or G gauge 45mm gauge track. Let's get into the next part of the loco build. I made the smoke box handrail assembly, did a bit to the front end cosmetics, cut holes in the smoke box for the exhaust and steam connections, and made a gentle start on the valve gear. Starting on the smoke box handrail, I use the 60mm steel billet as a bending former for the 332nd steel rod. A handrail stanchion well progressed. The ball end is 3 16th diameter and the base diameter is 1 8th. It was started by turning a 3 16th diameter for 0.450 long. Then with the mini parting tool, a groove was put in at 3 16 long from the front so that I could see the proportions for the front radius. Then a small radius tool was used to remove some metal for the rear radius. The ball front was filed by eye, as was the rear. The neck was filed with a chainsaw sharpening file. The 1 8 diameter was turned with a mini parting tool. Both stanchions formed on the ends of this 1 quarter inch free machining steel rod. I need them attached to the rod to drill them for the handrail. I drilled them in the vertical slide to get them accurate. Then back on the lathe for turning a 5 30 seconds length for 10 BA threading, using the parting tool to get into that space. The body is 0.350 inches long. It wasn't easy, but I pressed the old die holder into service with a job in the bench vise. My really ancient 10 BA die. I must have bought it in the early 80s. I used the die holder adjusting screws starting with the die opened out for the first cut and then closing it a little to get the size, checking with a 10BA nut. Threaded as far as I could go. There's quite a lead-in taper on that die too. This is the good thread. The second one I managed to fit in the lathe and the front half stripped. Luckily it's still good enough in the smoke box. Drilling through the center punched hole positions for the stanchions with a one mil drill. No center drilling. Then drill through 1.4 mil and tap 10 BA all the way through. Very carefully tapping by hand, holding the job and tap wrench in both hands. That way I could feel everything. I worked my way through all three taps. I burnished the handrail with a rotary wire brush at 2,500 RPM. After a lot of thought, I realized that having the stanchions tapped and secured the smoke box ring would make things easier. So I sawed off the thread, smoothed the ends, then drilled, chamfered and tapped for 10 BA. Luckily the waist was about half a mil larger than the thread. It was a real fiddle holding them in the three jaw and hardly ideal but without any side force it worked out okay. I made a jig to hold the stanchions at the same distance apart as on the smoke box. This was so that I could soft solder the handrail in position. I used the electrical cord 6040 solder with my usual zinc chloride flux, heating with a butane torch. Let's see how this works out with the fire in the loco. I didn't want to do the soldering when assembled on the smoke box. The jig was made using the Quarry Hunslet enamel paint smoke box temperature strip. It was okay at 180 degrees C. There's a bit too much solder on this side. It was wiped off later. Handrail fitted, but I need a spanner for those 2.5mm AF screws. The stanchions are fitted with countersunk screws on the rear face of the smoke box ring. The three one twelfth scale locos together. I would like to cover this gap between the smoke box and the frames. Small steel pieces from four mil thick black steel, angled eight degrees to fit the cylinder angles. It's time to correct the exhaust hole positioning. These were used to bolt the wrapper in position for brazing. 
The holes were filed to enlarge and correct the position. These will eventually need filling around the piping for air tightness. Measuring the vertical position of the steam inlet hole. Marked out, ready for drilling one quarter inch. The positioning didn't work out too well and they needed filing downwards also on one side. Exhaust and steam inlet holes completed on both sides. I checked them with screwed fittings to make sure the holes were large enough. Starting on the valve gear. At the cylinder's end, the knuckle that screws onto the valve rod is going to be 3 16th square by 0.4 inches long. Using the 48 thou wide slitting saw, I slit the center for the 1 16th inch link. It's slit 0.2 inches deep in two passes to get the correct width. Then I slit the piece to width. I'm using some 3 16th steel stock. I run the slitting saw at 200 RPM with steel. Here's the drawing. The cut piece on the left. I sawed it off with a junior hacksaw and then milled it to 0.4 inches long. The rear end has been drilled 2.6 mil for 5VA tapping and I've just chamfered it. I took care to get the hole as central as possible using a 3 16th rod in the chuck to get the vertical axis correct. Here's the first knuckle on the valve rod. It didn't screw all the way on. It turns out I cut a 1 8 by 40 TPI thread on the rods. And this is after I carefully checked the thread pitch. I later put the 5BA die down the valve rod thread. It wasn't pretty down at the shoulder end, where it matters. The second knuckle has just been milled to length with a half inch end mill. I run this at 600 RPM with steel. The finished back end. The threads were sloppy. I used Loctite 609 liberally, gently screwed it on, then with the brass tubing stepping up from 1 8th to 3 16th, rolled the whole lot over flat by flat on the surface table to make sure the knuckle was on square as the Loctite hardened. It just takes a few minutes, then left it overnight for curing. Turning the neck of the knuckle using the useful broken all hard axe or blade parting tool. It's very good for grooving and getting in tight spots like this. It's about half a mil wide. Finish turned in the collet chuck to about 0.180 inch diameter. I made two filing buttons for the knuckles and links from 3 16th silver steel and drilled through 2.2 mil for an 8BA bolt. Here I am heating them up on a piece of wire, the end of which was smoking initially, so I heated it to red heat to quickly burn it off. We don't want any nasty odours in the workshop. I've just radius the ends using the new 3 16th diameter filing buttons. Prior to this the assembly was mounted in the vertical slide for cross drilling. Drilled and tapped 8BA on one side and drilled 2.2mm on the other. The first part of the valve gear completed. This is how I squared the second knuckle for cross drilling. A parallel in the chuck and a piece of strip steel to align the valve rod. Two finished knuckles. 
Thanks for watching.